Budget 2009. Brought to you by Deloitte. Budget 2009. Brought to you by Deloitte. The global economy is experiencing a sharp downturn, spreading from the developed to developing countries. Its origins lie in macroeconomic imbalances of an unprecedented scale. The accumulation of debt by firms and households in some countries has been matched by an extraordinary rise in export earnings and savings in other regions. Behind these flows are millions of savers and lenders linked through financial architecture of such complexity that neither accounting standards nor regulatory oversight have served their intended purposes. Prudential banking rules have been overwhelmed by folly and fraud masquerading as financial innovation. This is a cycle that has played itself out periodically. The economic historian Karl Polanyi, 65 years ago, provided a classic account of how utopian faith in self-regulation has led repeatedly to exuberances of this kind in the rise and fall of market economies. The consequences are felt everywhere. If the balance sheet of a bank shrinks, its capacity to lend is eroded. If its lending is curtailed, businesses and households have to reduce their spending. If demand falls in Birmingham, factories close in Beijing. If production lines in China slow, demand for commodities from Africa dries up. The vegetable shop next to the mine closes and the drivers of delivery vehicles are asked to work short time on half pay. And if the driver then cannot pay his mortgage, the bank forecloses on his bond. The bank writes down its balance sheet again. This is the cycle the world is living through at the moment. So when a global motor company cuts back on making cars because people aren't buying them, it cancels orders for catalytic converters. Madam Speaker, this firm making catalytic converters is not in Detroit or Shanghai. It is in Utenag in the Eastern Cape. The mine producing the platinum that goes into that converter is sitting close to Rustenburg. The worker in the factory in Utenag and the mine worker in Rustenburg are now without work. We saw the largest platinum producer earlier this week announce the termination of 10,000 jobs. And the woman who runs a little stall selling vegetables outside the mine is making less money each passing week. And their families, all of them, face a future made more precarious by the vagaries of global finance. In a very short period, Madam Speaker, what started off as a financial crisis may well become the second Great Depression. Last year, 2.6 million workers in the United States lost their jobs. This year, in fact, two weeks ago, some 20 million migrant workers who left their places of work for the rural areas in China to celebrate the Lunar New Year would advise that they shouldn't return to the cities because their jobs have disappeared. 20 million workers in China is about one and a half times the number of people in employ in South Africa. That is the scale of what we're talking about. In the past 10 months, the International Monetary Fund has revised its forecast for global growth in 2009 downwards no less than five times from 3.8% in April last year to its current estimate of just half a percent. Initially, the downgrades were focused on developed countries, but projections for GDP growth in emerging markets have now halved from 6.6% in April to 3.3% currently. 3.3% is a lower number than what we've become accustomed to, Mr. President, but that 3.3% says to us that the only growth in the world this year will come from the developing parts of the globe. The United States has been in recession since the last quarter of 2007, 
and its economy is expected to contract by 1.6% this year. The official interest rate in the U.S. has been cut to almost zero. Growth, growth in Europe slowed to 1% last year and is forecast to contract to minus 2% this year. The U.K. economy is expected to shrink by 2.8% in 2009. China's GDP growth fell to 6.8% in the last quarter of 2008 and will slow this year to its lowest level since 1990. India's growth will fall by almost half. Sub-Saharan Africa is feeling the effects of the commodity price plunge and declining investor confidence. Projected growth in Sub-Saharan Africa slows to 3.5% in 2009 from 5.4% last year. And when we talk of Sub-Saharan Africa, we can look at the growth number, but we need to con constantly remind ourselves that that growth is of an incredibly low base. In responding to the crisis, immense commitments of funds have been made by governments of major economies in support of their financial institutions, and central banks have lowered interest rates to unprecedented levels.